Hey everyone, David Aragon and Ashley Mayu are taking a look at the race that kicks off the stakes action at Belmont at the Big A on Saturday. Race three is the grade two Vosper going seven furlongs on the main track for older horses. And Ashley, I'm not sure there's too much to talk about in here from a wagering standpoint, unless you love taking very short prices on horses, because the number six Cody's Wish is going to be a heavy, heavy favorite in this race as he turns back to sprinting, something that we know he can do well. Uh, well might be an understatement, David. At his best, he's been phenomenal to watch and it just has had some huge performances. When you go to those that streak from May of 2022 to June 10th, just the numbers and the figures that he's been posting, he's really stamped himself as a horse that's great from seven eighths to a mile. And last time out, they tried a mile and an eighth with him. Obviously, I think he deserved the chance to see. And, uh, you know, in terms of how he, he raced, it just wasn't, you know, his day. And I don't think it panned out for him. So him cutting back to seven ace and here against this group, he looks dangerous. Yeah, Cody's Wish, widely considered to be the leader of this sprinter miler division on the dirt. And uh, we've seen him reel off a slew of victories early this year, dating back to last year. And he's going to be ultra tough in this race, especially given who's lined up against him. It just doesn't feel like any major players in this division uh, want to face Cody's Wish, especially using this race as a potential prep for the Breeders' Cup. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector for this race before we get into the contenders. And the one knock I guess you could have against Cody's Wish in here, Ashley, is that there doesn't appear to be that much pace for him, at least on paper. The number one great navigator has a little bit of early speed. The number four accretive has tactical speed to be forward. But you do see Cody's wish placed last on the pace projector. Though you can say he is a horse that we have seen overcome unfavorable pace scenarios in the past. Absolutely. And actually going to some of his races in kind of mid-year in 2022, he was forward in races that were relatively quick at one turn distances, whether it be a, a mile at Belmont or, uh, sorry, uh, yes, a mile at Belmont or a mile at Churchill. So um, he could be last here. He could be a little bit more forward. I agree with this, though. I think looking at the other five runners in the field, great navigator from the inside, I think he'll be pretty forward as well as the Chad Brown trainee. And it is no surprise to see Cody's Wish get the LP flag indicating he has the highest late pace rating. He has a monster late kick on him when he gets the right kind of setup. Let's go through this field in post position order. The number one is Great Navigator and pretty cool New Jersey bred here. We'll take a look at his most recent start where he was winning a Jersey bred stakes race at Mammoth. He is by the little known but overachieving sire Sea Wizard. And he got this stakes victory last time stretching out to the mile and the 16th distance. But he is a horse that has had success going shorter in the past and even running second in the grade three Sanford as a two-year-old. This is a big step up in class for him, though, to face Cody's wish and the kind of company that's lining up for this New York graded stakes. It certainly is. But, you know, I kind of respect the connections, taking a shot, taking him outside of New Jersey. And, um, you know, even if he hits the board in here, it's a great performance. It's a grade two sort of in the money sort of thing. And he was very impressive last time out. I love that you mentioned Sea Wizard. A lot of people, unless you're following New Jersey racing this summer at Monmouth, might not know much about Sea Wizard. But especially in his two year olds and now his three years old, they've had a lot of success. Some really powerful numbers from a small crop. And this is a consistent runner. I mean, he's really done very little wrong in his career, but I agree. This is the big step up for him, and he is going to cut back in distance. The number two is Cowan, and a horse that we haven't seen very much of lately. Uh, he ended his 2022 campaign in May of that year, was off for basically a year and a half coming into his return last time at Charlestown, where he got the job done. He was making his first start off the claim uh, for new connections that day, and uh, that was using as a prep, obviously, for this race, but he's going to be stepping up against much, much tougher competition that he faced last time way tougher competition and obviously you, you know you go far down the page he's raced well in the springboard mile and uh, the smarty jones but that's back in 2020 2021 and a long layoff like that i think it's a it's a good sign that he was able to win I, it doesn't matter to me if you're a five thousand dollar claimer or a grade one winner a layoff of that length can be really hard on a horse depending on where they're placed and he raced very well but uh, in terms of that figure that figure certainly won't be uh necessarily that competitive against this bunch he certainly could take a step forward but uh the water is certainly deeper than when he faced at charlestown 
So number three is Sheriff Bianco. Let's take a look at his most recent race, which came pretty recently, just nine days ago at Aqueduct or the Belmont at the Big A meet. And he's a horse that just prior to this had run six days before that. So this is going to be uh, his third start in 15 days. But he seems like one of these horses for Linda Rice that just thrives on the action. He keeps showing up. He's remarkably consistent for racing as frequently as he does. This will mark the 12th start of his uh, year so far in 2023. And just one of these claims for Linda Rice that has really worked out but against this level of competition they're just taking a shot hoping to probably get some black type they probably are and, and i agree it's interesting to see him you know race these consecutive races but you go back historically he's sometimes pretty strong after not having that break and obviously they're not you know breezing him in between races so he, you know he's, he's fun to watch i think 2023 has been a lot different than 2022 he got a lot of wins last year uh you certainly can't complain if you own him he's only one for 11 this year but he's almost got two hundred four thousand dollars in purse earnings and anyone would love to have a horse like him from a consistency angle and maybe you know he could round out the exotics in here but uh the waters are deeper yes he's faced horses such as new york traffic and a couple of others down the page but Again, we, you know, we're kind of getting redundant probably as we go through this field. It's, it's going to be extremely hard to beat a horse like Cody's Wish. The number four is a creative. And Ashley, if you're trying to take a shot against Cody's Wish, you're likely trying to do it with a creative because he is the horse in this race that obviously has the most upside. We saw so much talent for him when he was unveiled as a three-year-old, winning his maiden race, then running that strong second in the Amsterdam to Gunite. Here's his most recent start at Saratoga, where he got the job done going a mile. I'm not sure that he's a horse that's going to be best going distances of a mile or further. I actually like him turning back to the seven furlongs here since he's shown so much speed early in his career. He's third off the layoff now. And we'll see if he can step it up against a rival like Cody's Wish. Completely agree. If you're going to try to, um, he would be the horse based on what he's shown in a limited number of starts. As you've mentioned, he showed a lot of talent on debut. They put him right in the grade two Amsterdam. He raced very well to just be beaten by a neck in there. And then they put him in the grade one uh, H. Allen Jerkins going seven ace. I also agree. I think this is a good spot for him distance wise. And so far after that long freshening, he's hard to knock this year. But again, he's going to get tested here for class. and He's going to have to take another step forward. The number five is High Oak, and nice to see him sort of get back on track at Saratoga this summer because he was a horse that had a very scary incident in the Fountain of Youth going back to 2022 and just seemed like a horse for a while that maybe he didn't want to do it anymore. His first few starts off the layoff were pretty dismal, but uh, got back on track with a couple of placings and recent starts, including that uh, third place finish in the Forgo last time behind horses like Gunite and Elite Power. So he's definitely one you can consider to get a piece of this, but pretty hard to make a case for him to win a race like this against Cody's Wish. I agree. It's just been so long since he has won a race. He was so good early breaking his maiden, the grade two Saratoga special after that, where he was able to beat Gunite. But uh, I, I wonder too, when you go back to the fountain of youth, he had all that time off, right? He had a year off. Maybe he needed to get going. And uh, Katie Davis has done a great job with him in his last two, I think has given him a uh, good rise to put him into contention. I just wonder also from a pace perspective in here, um, he's going to need some pace to work at, I think, at and run at in the end. And also, again, the class perspective for him. And then drawn on the outside is the number six, Cody's Wish. Let's take a look at one of the top performances of his entire career, two back when he won the grade one Met Mile. And Ashley, you know, we're showing this at the from the top of the stretch, but the move that he made around the far term was pretty breathtaking. He went from last to first in just about the span of a furlong. The acceleration that he showed just puts him in another league than the rest of these horses. And he's pulling away from a really good field. I mean, why did Barrio came out of this race to win the grade one Whitney so impressively in his next start? Obviously, Cody's wish came back and lost the Whitney to that foe, losing by 10 lengths when they tried the mile and eighth distance. And I guess if you're going to knock him, you might say that even if the Whitney was a mile, he wasn't winning that race. I mean, he just never seemed to be running his race that day. But two turn races can be a different animal than one turn races. And he's getting back to what we know he does best. Yeah. And the, the Whitney, um, I, it's it's tough for me to say, right? Is it a mile and an eighth? Did he just not get the trip he needed? I just don't think he wants to go that far. But as I said earlier, I respect the connections for taking the shot. I think sometimes we see horses where 
we want to see them try different distances, right? Because we think the talents there and the connections usually maybe decide not to and stay to what they know works. And they gave him a shot to see if he could. He couldn't. They bring him back to this distance. I think it should suit him well. And um, regardless of trip, he's been able to work out trips against very deep fields, way deeper fields than he's going to face in this. So I think he's going to be extremely tough to beat. But as we said, he's one to five. Uh, He's going to go off as the heavy, heavy favorite. Let's throw up our picks for this grade two Vosberg. And Ashley, I'm assuming you picked Cody's wish as well. Yes, we both have Cody's wish on top. Uh, just feels like a race that's uh, better to appreciate as a fan rather than as a better. I agree. These are the races where, you know, you just, if you're at home, you put your feet up and you just enjoy racing for what it is. I mean, we actually have the the same super here. And I think that's pretty much, this is how I saw the race planning out. I think, the, you know, the next best horse is the Chad Brown trainee who's got some upside lightly raced. But um, this is one where I think Cody's wish we might see another powerhouse performance from. Yeah, feels like Cody's wish is going to be pretty tough to beat in this Vosberg, which is likely to serve as his prep for a title defense in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile in one month's time. Both Ashley and I have him on top in this Vosberg. Good luck if you're playing the races this weekend.